hello everyone uh, this is okay here and we have a very special video for you um, and I say video rather than stream because I think it's something that you might want to uh, to re-watch in case we go too fast during this video to really properly study each of the these positions. So what I have for you is a series of, of positions from the Crazy House World Championship candidates. And they're from the second half of the candidates, so I haven't actually looked at these positions with you in any of my previous highlights videos, although you might have seen them live in the games. Um, but what we're going to focus on with these positions is how they illustrate certain motifs in Crazy House, certain Crazy House motifs that, that keep on occurring, especially mating motifs. Um, so to begin with this one, um, this was actually from game one of the candidates between Schwanet and Little Plotkin. Um, and when you look at the position, maybe you can guess what the motif is that this position um, may be illustrating. As I said, I'm, I might go a little bit fast in this video, but what I'd like you to do when you um, is, I, I think this video would be quite a, quite useful for, for even for both beginners to beginning to advanced players um, to pause the video on each. A puzzle and try to calculate. So I've purposely made them fixed images so I'm not tempted to actually move around the pieces and so it's actually a challenge to visualize uh, what the position will look like. Uh, although there's a hint uh, of the length of the mate. So in this position what is the motif? Well you've probably guessed, it's a back rank mate idea. Um, so I'll let you just try and calculate. Can you try and calculate the mate? Um, so we're obviously going to start with queen to here. There's going to be some kind of a blocker. We have exactly one pawn in hand, so I think you can guess where that pawn is going to go. So where will the king go? So whatever that blocker is, we're going to be taking it. And then another blocker is going to land. Um, okay, so there's going to be a blocker. The king goes back. Another blocker is going to land. And that blocker can be taken to produce a queen, but that queen can be taken with the knight. So can you see how we would finish off that mate? So it's queen here, takes the blocker. Well, if the block uh, takes the blocker, so the queen is now on this square, there's a knight here and a king here. And there are two cases you have to consider. Was the blocker a knight, or was the blocker a rook or a queen? And in each of these cases, you have to try and think, how would you get in on this king and knight? And this is not too hard now. So that's um, an example of the, of the motif of the back rank. So I'm going to to, to move on, but uh, for those watching the video and there um, later, which, which is what I, I which, what I recommend this video for, um, you can try and pause and calculate all the variations for each position. And I, I think it will be a really good exercise to really drill these motifs and really get better. Them. And then the other thing really to, to note is we're talking about doing queen here check, doing another check with our pawn in hand and so on, and it's worth saying because we're constantly giving check we don't need to worry about our own king. So our king could be one move away from mate but if we have a series of checks which lead to mate we don't really need to even look at our half of the board. Okay, so the second position I want to look at is also the same motif. And 
actually anything you might think of um, will is probably going to work. Um, so queen takes rook might work, and what was played in the game, uh, rook at at um, g1. Um, will also work. So I just wanted to just let, let you think about this for a second and see if you... So this was in fact a game between um, Blitzbullet and Fumitox. So Fumitox was black and Fumitox did indeed um, find the mate. But he, he played Rook at G1. Okay. And one thing to notice, by the way, in this position is at the moment white has no blockers. So he is quite susceptible to a, to a back rank attack. Okay, well it turns out, so rook here will work and you can try and calculate it. It turns out queen takes rook is even more efficient. Um, followed by a back rank attack and then try and think how are we going to bring our knight in to complete the mate and yeah one way of doing it uh, I mean this is a little bit of a hint this square here might be a useful a useful place for the knight to go so anyway this is just something to calculate see if you can calculate the mate and I'll just leave it for a few seconds just Okay, to see if you, you guys can calculate it. Uh, and also, I mean, obviously, key is that this bishop cuts off the king from escaping. But anyway, the, these positions, as I said, are for you to, 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 to go away and think about um, later. Um, so I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to might, I might move quicker than, than you can calculate, and then I can calculate. But, okay, so these first two positions we've looked at um, from the games of Schwanet against Little Plotkin and this one, um, as I said, was uh, Blitzbullet against Fumitox, are illustrating the motif of the back rank. Okay, so uh, the next one I want to look at is this one. This one, okay. Oops, I'm just going too far ahead. Okay, so um, this is actually a game between Fumatox and JK the Bullfrog. Uh, it's quite it's a little bit of a simpler problem than the previous ones, because it's just a mate in two. And some of you have probably already seen the mate. Um, so Riemann 12, I will share the study link, but the study has the answers. So I can, I'm going to share it when I put up the video. But for the moment, this is puzzles and just screenshots. So it's a test in calculation. Uh, so the and so the theme here is queen invasions. Queen invasion. So you've probably already seen how the mate is going to go. The queen can invade and then take here and it's checkmate because the knight cuts off the king. Exactly, Riemann 12's got it, well done. So we've seen the back rank idea and a queen invasion. So those are two very important themes in Crazy House. Okay, a third very important theme is drawing the king out. So this is a slightly more complex. Eight, okay, so if we can draw the king out, then all, all of all of white's pieces can get at the king. At the moment, the king is sheltered a little bit. This square is actually quite well protected, it's a d7 square. But if we can draw the king out, then the king will be in some danger. Now, normally the way you draw the king out is by dropping pawns. Um, and the king has to just keep on chomping those pawns, because if, if the king ever doesn't take one of those pawns, then you can maybe mate the king in some other way. And then the, the, those pawns cut off a lot of squares. Uh, but in this situation, there is no pawn drop, so black might have thought he was safe. So I'll just leave you to think for a second. So 
So this is a game between Master Tan and Fumitox. And Master Tan was white and didn't find indeed find the mate. Um, Rook c8, blocker on d8, knight on c7 idea, says Riemann. 12, spot on. So rook at c8, if rook takes rook, pawn takes rook, gets a queen, blocker, knight at c7 would be mate. Okay, so then let's calculate. Rook at c7, blocker, he can't take, so he... Um, so he's got two options, either run or block. Um, well, if he's going to run, then he, he might it would come to the same thing as if he blocked. Knight, uh, knight at c7, that forces him to run. Okay, so he runs to d7. Um, as I said, we don't need to worry about our safety if we keep on landing checks on black. So can we see a check? We've drawn the king out a little bit further. Can we see a check on d7? Knight to e5. Perfect. Knight to e5 draws the king out a little bit further, and that knight would be cutting off the square. Um, so he'd have to just come to d6, and pawn at c5 would be checkmate. Uh, absolutely. And now I just am thinking, what if rook c8, king here straight away? Then knight here. Ah, oh, hang on. Um, hmm. Then, oh, maybe knight. Yeah, if, if we don't need to use a knight to get the king out straight away to e7, then maybe we could drop a knight here, come out, and then at e5. Yeah. So, so that would be easy as well. So we, we drop a knight first to stop it coming out to the square to e6. Okay, so that's drawing the king out. Um, now, there's a special kind of drawing the king out, which I call a yo-yo mate. And I think this puzzle is going to be too complex for us to look at all the variations. Uh, so maybe this is something um, I said to, to have a look at on the video, um, to, to pause the video and have a think. But the yo-yo mate, we could go bishop takes pawn. And if you don't take that bishop, I'm landing a queen and it'd be mating. Although that's not strictly true. The king could try and run this way. but if the king does take the bishop, we then land a pawn here. And again, if you don't take it, then there's potential for mate. So he probably takes it. And then after that, we then maybe push this pawn to here. Uh, and I call it the yo-yo mate because we've got the king on a string, just taking up all these pawns. And the moment it stops taking the pawns and running back, we're, we're going to let the yo-yo go. And so we're pu pulling pulling the king in and then letting it go. And we, we've got the king on a string and it's, it's going to be... We first draw it out into the centre and then push it back against the edge of the board. So bishop takes pawn, king takes pawn here, king takes pawn here, and then the king has to go back again. Um, okay, so let's have a look. Trying to see if which this was. So this was again Master Tan as white uh, against J.K. the Bullfrog as black. So bishop takes pawn did happen, then king takes. So then what? Okay, let's just, let's see if we can calculate. Um, we can't do queen at f6 ideas. That would be one way of penning the king against the center because the knight covers that square. But we, we just drop another pawn takes. Okay. Um, we could pen the king in or we could go a5. If takes, we've then got queen at h6. Okay, so but this is going to be quite a lot to calculate because there's also bishop here ideas, and then maybe, and the f6 square is covered. So, but maybe this knight can come in and cover the light squares. So, and the knight is even protected by the bishop, so the king can't even come and eat the knight. So we, it definitely looks very promising. Um, but yeah, definitely this is going to be something to try and puzzle out. But it's just a to illustrate this this motif of what I call the yo-yo mate. Okay, next one. And um, so we've had um, we've had back ranks, we've had queen invasions, we've had drawing the king out, and a special example of drawing the king out is drawing it out with pawns, with diagonal pieces, um, the yo-yo. And the next uh, motif I'd like to talk about is deflection. So we have a knight and queen in hand, 
Can you see a deflection which would threaten mate in one in this position? So this was a game between Sexy and I Know It against Blitz Bullet. Just see. And it's quite hard to see this deflection. I mean, unless you think, unless you kind of have the idea of deflecting. Uh, and so actually Sexy and I Know It didn't find this particular mate, but I think he did want win. Yeah, I can't remember if he won the game or not. Um, but it was game four of their candidates match. So all these positions are from uh, candidates matches and they are not in any highlights videos that I've shown you so far. So they're all new material. Okay, so knight at c8 is one idea and apparently it is eventually mating, but there's an even faster mate, which is uh, knight at g8 because it threatens to deflect the rook and then the queen would land here with checkmate. And if the rook isn't deflected from protecting f7, then king takes pawn follows. Okay, so can you see a follow-up? Got knight at g8, king takes pawn. Can you see a check? You've now only got a queen in hand. Not so easy. So this square would, so, uh, rather this square is, having taken this pawn, the king could suddenly run back to here, which might be a slight concern. It's quite hard to cover that square, in fact. Okay, so it's a very beautiful. Knight to g8, king takes pawn, knight to f4 check. So the king could take the knight or could step up, but if he, if he takes the knight or takes this pawn, a queen landing on this vacant e6 square then completely cuts the king off and it's checkmate. And if he runs forward, then the queen landing on e4 is checkmate. So it's a beautiful deflection in this position, knight at g8. Okay, this is a more complex position. We've got a knight, a bishop, and a rook in hand. Um, and again, there's a very, um, we would love to build, uh, our king is relatively safe, and we'd love to play knight at c3, picking up the queen. But the knight covers that square. Now it turns out there's a really beautiful um, way of deflecting that knight um, and, and being able to land our, our own knight on c3. So let's just try and calculate what happens. How can we deflect this knight? Some kind of check. Okay, so rook at d2 check. Try and try and follow the line. What happens after rook at d2 check? The king lands on e1. We can't take the queen. Well, we can take the queen, but it wouldn't be with check. But now there's a knight on d2. So that can be taken. King takes force, then knight takes queen. The king can't approach these knights, because there are two knights here, because queen here will be checkmate. So the king has to try and run away. These two knights control everything. If you try and run out, queen here will be checkmate. Okay, so it's the idea of deflection. Um, sorry if I'm giving away the answers to these, because really it's supposed to be an exercise for you guys in calculation. So, um, but I, th I think... I think it's I think they're valuable. Um, okay, the next is um, the magnet mate. And I, I didn't say where the last one came from. Um, the last one came from Blitz Bullets against Master Tan. So again it's Master Tan as black, who did indeed find the, the mate. 
Now, the next one is the mag what I call the magnet mate. Um, and Sexy I Know It did indeed play this mate against JK the Bullfrog um, in game eight of their candidates match. Um, and what I call the magnet mate is a move where you put a piece next to the king. So it's like a pawn which draws the king out. Oh, well, that's keeping the king on a string and then pushing him back. But a magnet mate is something much more direct. You're just you're trying to just dislodge the king to one in one direction where he will be vulnerable. So the king here is actually very safe because there are no pawns that can check it, there are no knights that can check it, all the squares are covered. And but we can use but if we could just deflect the king just to this square here, suddenly there is a knight check. And and that king will be very vulnerable. So what I call a magnet mate is this, this idea of forcing the king or tempting the king to a square where it suddenly becomes very vulnerable. Um, as an example of this, suppose we had uh, a king here and a knight here and an, an open square on h7. If you put a rook on h8, king takes h8, you could land queen at h7 checkmate. So it's that kind of little trick. Or suppose the king is sort of trying to run away and it's the sort of situations where you put a bishop covering this diagonal and the king has to come back and take that bishop and suddenly when it comes back it's at the edge of the board. So I wonder if you've seen how to finish this off with the pawn, knight, rook and queen. Um, so can you see a way of dislodging that king to a square where it's not going to be so safe. Yeah, so you drop a rook on d8 and the king will be forced to take it. Then we suddenly, we are we don't have pawn checks, but we have a knight check. And a knight here or a knight here. The knight here, so let's have a think. Which works? We only have one knight, so we can't waste it. So if we went knight here or knight here and the king runs back to this square, it's not so clear, and then the king could actually run up. So knight here looks better. So knight here, and the king's only got two squares, two light squares. But here we just need a pawn and it's checkmate. And if it runs here, we could drop our queen on d8 and it's checkmate. So yeah. So this is um, the motif which I'm calling the magnet mate. And just to give another example, this is a little more complex example. Uh, and in this game, uh, also between uh, the same two players, I believe, uh, Sexy and JK, Sexy and I know it, and JK the Bullfrog. Uh, this time, JK the Bullfrog did indeed win this game, but he didn't win it using um, the magnet technique, the magnet motif, rather. Um, I think he just put his queen on on f t um, on f two and soon found mate. But there's a very beautiful way of winning this very quickly, which is you drop the queen on g2. And you see this knight is beautifully set up for the Arabian mate. So queen at g2, king takes g2, rook at f2. The king has to go back into the corner and then rook takes h2 as mate. Or if the king goes to h3, well, it turns out we actually have two rooks in hand. Um, so we could just dump another rook on h4 and it's checkmate. Um, yeah, if we didn't have that second rook, then rook takes pawn, king would come here, and we'd need a, another piece, like a, a bishop. No, that doesn't work, but we'd need some, some other piece to... We'd be worried the king would run back and take our knight and so on. So it wouldn't be so clear. Okay, so that's a very nice motif. Um, now, uh, this is another uh, game. Six and nine it did indeed find. Um, so it com it combined a little bit these two ide um, the two ideas we talked about earlier: drawing out the king, 
and yeah so I'll, I'll leave this position with you for a few moments to try and have a think So this is a game between Little Plotkin and Sexy I Know It. And Sexy I Know It as black, can you guess what he played? Um, so again, if we have a pawn, a rook, and a queen, we have really no direct attacks with the pieces. Uh, there are no like pawn checks or rook checks. Um, the most direct thing we do have is bishop takes h3, and that does look quite promising. And if the king didn't take that bishop, then a queen would be landing, and um, that would be quite the end of the game. So bishop takes h3, king takes h3, fair enough. But still, how do we finish it off? Because if we try and drop a pawn to check, the pawn cover, uh, white's pawn covers that square. So can you see how to dislodge that king to a square where it's more vulnerable? So bishop takes h3, king takes. If we just landed landed a queen or a rook straight away, the king could block and then run back, and it's not so clear. So what Sexton did was very beautiful. He did bishop takes pawn, king takes, and he dropped a rook on h4. If the king tries to run back now, you have queen at h3. King can't run diagonally, it's f1 is covered, has to run back to g1, and queen h1 would be checkmate. So this rook on h4 has to be taken. Um, but then it's mate in one. So bishop takes pawn, king takes rook at h4, king takes rook. Queen at h5 is checkmate. Okay, and now quite a complex example which wasn't actually found in, in the match. Oh, he was actually found. Okay, wow. Master Tan actually did find this. Wow, okay. This is quite a, quite a complex one. So it combines the idea of deflection with, um, with the magnet idea. So I'm just going to let you have a look at the position for a while. So this was a game between Master Tan again. So Master Tan really is is, a, is, is really a master of these motifs. Um, between Master Tan as white and Little Plotkin as black. Um, so the motif, as I said, it combines this uh, magnet idea with deflecting the defender. So these two motifs we've looked at. We've looked at back rank, queen invasion, drawing the king out, the yo-yo mate, special example of drawing the king out, lots of pawns. The last two examples we'll be thinking about are deflecting the defender and the magnet mate. And, and this, this position actually beautifully illustrates both. Okay. So we could guess the first move, could we? Hmm. H6. So, in fact, this position is amazing because I just said, not only does this combine um, deflecting a defender with the magnet, mate idea. It actually involves the back rank idea as well. So you see, bishop takes h6. So this is sort of beautifully encapsulates everything we've done in this video so far. Bishop takes h6. If you don't take that bishop, queen at g7 is going to be a problem. Um, I mean, if the king runs up, it's not going to survive very long. I mean, knight here, king here, bishop here, something like this. Or, or blocking it off, bishop here, block it off. And then knight here, checkmate. Block off the diagonal. Um, so bishop takes h6, you definitely have to take it. Rook takes. But that weakens your back rank. So 
you can then drop a bishop on f8. So you've deflected the defense of the back rank. So def yeah, deflecting the defender is a, is a you've deflected the defender from the back rank. So we have rook takes bishop, bishop takes, and again there's g7 threat. So he has to take that. Okay, and at the end of that sequence, we've used up our bishop, but we've still got a queen in hand, and we've still got a rook in hand. And we've used this um, idea of deflecting the defender. We've got rid of one rook is now sitting kind of on h6, not really defending the back rank. And the other one we've just got rid of, we've cleared it out by, um, by dropping bishops. A bishop on f8 and takes takes. And the king is now on f8, on the back rank, without any defense of the back rank. And we've now got this rook in, in our hand. Um, so can you calculate the mate? And this is where the magnet technique comes in, the magnet motif, as it were. So we can't get at that. Well, we could get it. See, the problem is, if we did something like land a queen on e7, the problem is f7 is actually guarded by the bishop. So the king would just run away. So we can't do a 7th rank attack, but maybe we could do an 8th rank attack. Okay, so this is the magnet technique. We drop a rook on e8. If the king takes the rook, queen at e7 is checkmate. If the king runs up, queen at g8 is checkmate. So maybe you didn't follow that completely, so just have a... I'll, I'll leave that for a few seconds, but maybe you can come back to it when you look at the video. So this is the magnet idea, draws the king out, this is checkmate. Okay, so I'm afraid that for some of you I'm going too slowly and for some of you I'm going too quickly. Um, now this is a game from Little Plotkin against someone, um, against Sexy I Know It. So this is Little Plotkin as white against Sexy I Know It, and it's a new motif. It's the discovered attack idea. Um, and we're not going to go into the details, but you can see here if white plays knight f6 check, the black queen can't take that knight because the black queen is pinned by uh, by the white queen. But if he, how, if he takes it or if he moves his king, white then has a follow-up check, queen takes queen check, and then suddenly this is crazy house. So that means that white has got the queen in hand um, Ebos says, Magnet Carlson approves this technique. Yeah, so I was thinking because, let me see. Because um, you have, okay, you have Smothered Mate, you have Hmm, I was trying to think. Was there another idea which I wanted, another motif I wanted to discuss? Hmm. It's not coming to me. So knight here, uh, queen takes queen, king takes queen. We then still have uh, another knight in hand. And it turned out that... Um, so although Little Plotkin did find a mate he, uh, in this position, the fastest mate was landing a knight on uh, d4 because that covers then, that really covers the escape route onto the queen side, You're covering this square and this square. You're landing with the queen at some point, but if the king goes back this way, queen here will be checkmate, so the king has to run in this direction. Um... But then you, you still, this knight survives in that case. So we have ideas like queen, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, this is supposed to be an exercise in calculation, so let's calculate. Knight f6, king e7, queen takes queen, king takes queen. Knight at d4, 
if the king tries to go this way, I think it's getting mated quite quickly with something like queen here, check, uh, king here, queen takes pawn, check. If the king runs towards your enemy pawns, it's in trouble, so it might run back. But then we have pawn here, check. Oh, no, it, so all this is nonsense because the bishop is just cutting off this whole side of the board. Okay, so it has to try and run the other way. So again, knight f6, check. King e7, queen takes queen, just so you don't lose the queen for nothing. King takes queen, knight at c4, check. King here. Now, do we want to lay our queen on the board? We don't have to. What we could do is drop a pawn. Yes, this is what we want to do. Drop a pawn here, check king takes pawn. And then there's another motif which I haven't discussed in this series. We have a knight here and a knight here. If we swing this knight into here, check. So we have knights here and here and the king is here. Knights which are three apart like this actually control a whole small square because this knight controls those two squares and this knight controls those two squares. So knight here, if the king would dare to take this knight, of course which is not defended, uh, remember this knight guards this square, so queen here would simply be check would be checkmate because the knight guards these two escape squares. Um, so the king would have to run. As I said this whole square is guarded, so the king would would have to run here, but then queen here would be checkmate. You've got knights here and here. Queen here would be checkmate. So okay, that's the. A boss says, sorry, I get cheesy whenever I haven't slept all night. Yeah, same, I haven't slept all night either. Um, Wittig is asking me, can I follow Can I follow you? Um, I'm only allowed 200 followers on Leeches, so I'll have to delete people in order to follow you. Um, so yes, it's possible I can follow you, but I'm already kind of full at the moment, so it's complicated. Um, so it's, it will take time. I'll have to delete people in the future. So, I and I I don't see why. So yeah, you have to. I follow you if there's a good reason I should follow you. Um. Okay, this one I'm not going to go into detail on, but it was an amazing game between uh, J.K. the Bullfrog and I think it was Fumatox. Um. Yes, it was game six of the candidates match between JK the Bullfrog and Fumatox. Um, I found it an amazing one because white looked like he'd run out of material. Look at black, it's got two queens, two rooks, a bishop and a knight and a pawn. Um, actually, actually, this position, it looks conceivable that white does have a mate, but a few moves earlier, it, it looked like white had completely run out of material and there wasn't any mate coming. Um, maybe the Fumatox didn't quite step exactly the right way, and so the, the position land ended up like this. And still, finding the mate, you only have, you do have two knights, which is good, and you've got four pawns, which is also good. Um, and the black king is a little bit exposed. But still, finding the mate in these sorts of positions is not so easy, uh, and does require quite careful coordination. Uh, yeah, and this is really quite difficult to calculate. So this is, this let's say is like the the starred, the starred example, and yeah, very difficult to calculate. And as I said, th these are all in a study, um, and I'll share the study link with the videos. But they are not in the given order in the study, which I have to apologise for, because the study actually has sixty four of these examples, and what I'm presenting to you in this video is just twenty six of them. Uh, and these 26 specifically linked to certain motifs that I just want to illustrate. Um, but the motif here is the king hunt. The king is exposed and you somehow need to coordinate your pieces to hunt this king down to first draw it out a bit and then push it into the court into some corner. Okay, this one is a mate in two, but it's a darn hard mate in two to spot. 
well not darn hard. Once you know it, the theme, it's a lot easier. So can you guess the theme? Um, Remo says, is there a good way to tell if you sack a pawn in front of the king or jump right right in on the on the knight moves? Yeah, um, that's exactly it. It's like um, so the, the dropping the pawns is what I call the yo-yo technique. You're putting giving, putting the king on a string. Um, do we go for a pawn or do we go for the knight moves? Um, it's hard to say. We've got four pawns, so we don't need to be saving when it comes to the pawns. But if I was looking at this position, it feels like we've already got the king out into the... If the king were back on the back rank, then we might want to sort of draw it out a little bit. We already have knight checks. So we have squares, defended squares, which we can drop knights on to attack the king. So my guess is it's going to be a knight check to start. Why would we want to draw the king further when we have a beautiful knight check? Knight, knight outpost, as it were. And, and yeah, so a protected square where you can put your knight would be a very good sign that that's going to be... a. Uh, and protected means the king can't just run up and eat the knight and then run back again. So that's going to be very promising. Okay, um, for this one, can you guess what the theme is? And for those of us just joining us, the themes we've looked at so far, the back rank, the queen invasion, uh, drawing the king out, and then just the last one we just looked at was the king hunt once you've drawn the king out sometimes. And the yo-yo mate is a special, specific example of drawing the king out when you just... You drop pawns in front of the king and then push it back with your queen. But with, we drop it, sorry, you, you drop pawns in front and then you push it into the corner and mate with the queen. Okay, and then two really big ones, deflecting a defender, really, really nice idea, and the magnet mate, which is deflecting the king. Instead of deflecting the defender, you're deflecting the king just a little bit so then you can land your checks. And notice all of these puzzles so far have all been about just ignore your own king safety. We're just going to go check, 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 and then checkmate. And of course, in real games, and actually in some examples later, you have to worry about your own king safety. So after the magnet mate, uh, we went to discovered check, and now we have this new theme. So have you seen what the theme is for this one? Anyone in chat? quite an important theme. Pinned pieces, yep, indeed. So we have a bishop pinned uh, by the queen and we have this pawn pinned by the bishop. Um, so once you see these pins, those pinned pieces can't move. So queen h3 check, he could block or he could move the king and then queen takes g2 as checkmate. Very powerful stuff. Um, in the game that, that mate wasn't actually found. Uh, a slower mate was found. Um, so this is a game between Master Tan and Little Plotkin. So Little Plotkin played a slightly slower mate but he, he he found the mate. Um, and actually there's another example of this. This is another defensive idea. So this is the same idea of exploiting a pin, but from the defensive side. And this is a game which Little Plotkin as white won against Master T against Schwanet as black. It was game 10 of the candidate series. Um, Schwanet played rook at e7, which looks good. It's attacking the queen back, but it's a fatal error because that rook is pinned to the king and it disrupts, it interferes with the protection of these two bishops. Uh, after which little Plotkin played uh, mate in two. So can you see the mate in two? If you, can he exploit this pin of the rook to the king? He's got a queen, a knight, a pawn in hand. So yeah, I'm sure several of you have seen it already. He just took this bishop, and king has to take back. 
and the second queen lands with checkmate. So in fact, Schwana only had two winning moves in this position. They were, so the uh, white is just actually, Lilplotkin kind of just has played queen at e6. And obviously, it looks like if you take the queen, maybe a pawn drop here. But what he hadn't, uh, both were in very low time. If you take that pawn, there, there are actually no checks. This rook is covering all knight checks. This knight is covering pawn checks. And there would be a pawn on e6 covering a pawn check from, from e6. So pawn takes queen was completely winning. Um, and in fact, even king f8 is completely winning. There's still no knight checks. But Schwanet fell into the trap and played rook at e7. And Lilplotkin exploited the pin. Rook takes bishop, king takes queen at c8 checkmate. So interference and exploiting a pin is a very important uh, motif in Crazy House and in chess because Crazy House is ultimately chess. Okay, next one, um, we have a queen in hand, we have a couple of knights. Um, the, the motif is kind of the light and dark squares and minor piece mates. Um, it seems like we can't quite get in on this king because the bishop defends. But actually two knights is quite good. So queen at g7, bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes pawn or king g8, either way. With these knights, we can check the king. So we, have, we can control um, the dark squares with our bishops. And we've got another bishop in hand after we've, sac after we've uh, sacked our queen for the bishop. We can control the dark squares with the bishops. And with a couple of knights, we can easily control the light squares as well. For example, a knight here would control these two light squares. We just need to control, say, these two light squares. We could do that with a knight here, potentially. And there may be a knight here. Um, knight here, then king would come here. So I'm just, I'm just talking in the abstract. Obviously, if you want to, it's best to calculate these things. But queen here, bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes pawn. If king doesn't take the pawn, king goes here. Then we do this knight here check. Then king takes pawn. We still got our bishop in hand, so bishop here would be checkmate. So I think king takes pawn is a good idea. Um, but then we can go f6. If the king goes back, we have knight here checkmate, so the king comes up. And basically anything we do will be mating, but knight here check, king here, another knight here check, covers this square, so it comes here, and then pawn here, something like this. And then this bishop is protected because we put a bishop on f6. So it's quite easy to, to calculate that this is, we have a minor piece mate just with our bishops and knights. Um, so sometimes you should not be afraid to, to give up the queen as long as you calculate that you have enough with your minor pieces. Okay, so this one, there are actually two ways to mate. Um, one is following what we've been saying the whole time. If, um, there is only one obvious check, which is dropping a pawn on h7. Uh, it does mate, and it's incredibly beautiful. Uh, pawn at h7, king takes pawn, knight at g5 check, the king can't run up, so it has to run back uh, to either g8 or h8. If it goes um, to h8, then we have rook at h, rook at h8, king g8, queen takes f7 checkmate. And similarly, okay, so basically the king is finished. If it goes to g8, queen takes f7, and so on. But wait, 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 wait a second. Pawn at h7, black is not going to be foolish enough to take that. He can just step aside, king to h8. Then rook at g8, king takes h7, knight at g5, king takes our rook. King takes our rook. Hmm. And now the problem is we don't have a rook in hand, so after queen takes h f7, king to h8, we don't have a rook anymore to finish off the mate. So it turns out there is a very beautiful mate in that situation. Um, the king doesn't go to h8 because otherwise this knight on g5 could take this pawn. 
Um, and then we have an extra pawn in hand. And this queen would cut off. If king goes to h7 again, king here, king comes back. Okay, I'm, I'm miscalculating. Um, let's have, let, let me be silent a second and think. So pawn at h7, king h8, rook g8, king takes pawn, let g5, king takes rook. So what I was saying was, If, so queen takes f7 isn't correct, but why not? Um, let's see. Queen takes f7. King h8, yeah. Okay, and then there's no follower. Okay. So, but there is a there is a very beautiful mate if the king, after king takes rook. Very, very beautiful mate. And it's this knight to h6, check. So remember, h7 is cut off by our knight on g5. This knight to h6, check. See, before, if you go queen takes f7, king goes to h8, and it's safe. But if you take a knight on h6, you have queen takes f7, and then queen to h7 is checkmate, defended by the knight. So this knight to h6, it can't be taken. King would have to go to h8. But then we have got two knights here and here. Mm, so one of them could take on f7. Maybe this one, the knight on h6, could take on f7. So the king had to go back to g8. But now we have a pawn in hand. And we have double checks, so we go knight back to h6, double check, king here, and queen here, checkmate. Okay, so we have a very beautiful mate, uh, starting with pawn at h7, rook at g8. But there's actually a much simpler mate. Uh, and this is, I've, I'm calling this a double mate threat. You just land a knight on g5 and you're threatening a mate with queen takes f7 but you're also threatening a mate with pawn at h7 and rook at g8 and probably black's best defense is, is defense is knight at f6 but it's not hard to see that yeah that does pretty good job because it's covering g8 and h7 but it's an overburdened knight and it can't cover everything um, so it's not too hard to calculate it can't cover everything but the reason why you can do, and this is very different from all the previous puzzles we looked at, the reason why you could do a move like knight at g5 is because black ha has no mate threat at all on the white king. So there's no need to go check, 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 checkmate in this position. If we create a double mate threat, a, a mate threat on f7 and a mate threat on h7, uh, and we can calculate this as some kind of forcing mate that either way we're, we're getting in. Um, we don't need to worry about anything black might throw at the white king. If, if black throws a check on f3, we just take it. Um, and then the check on e2, we just sidestep. So this is actually a special case of asking yourself whose mate is faster. And this is very important in Crazy House, to look at your own king and say, how many moves would it take? How many, how many moves without check, that is, would it take for my king to be mated? Like if if black could just play consecutive moves without response, without any defense, how many moves would it take for, for my king to be mated? Um, and how many moves now? And then to ask the same question for white. So white, even if white didn't have a direct mating attack, he just needs two moves, just drop a knight on g5, and then he has a direct uh, mating attack. Whereas black doesn't have this kind of one free move and then... So it's, it's a special case of this question, which is very important in Crazy House, of whose mate is faster. And in this situation, black's mate is faster if you play knight g5. Uh, sorry, white's mate is faster. So um, knight g5, you're creating a double mate threat and your, your mate is certainly faster. 
So black has to defend, but he can't defend both, and so you win. Uh, so as, a, as an example of whose mate is faster, this is a, also a very good example uh, in a game between Sexy I Know It as white and Little Plotkin as black. And shockingly, uh, this is a completely crushing position for white, but uh, what Sexy I Know It played in the game is a very natural thing to do, is queen e7 check, king goes to f8. He threw a few checks on the black king, but actually chased the black king into safety and ended up, actually the white, white ended up getting mated. But if you just look at this position, who, whose mate is faster in this position? Black has bishop at g3, takes, takes, something, well, well don't even take, just step back to h1. And black doesn't have enough for any mate. You could drop another bishop on g2, you could just take it. Drop something here, just take it. Um, so black's, black, black needs more preparation in order to in order to find a mate. So if white just sort of goes very aggressive attacking black and maybe even sacrificing some pieces, as happened in the game, uh, then black might have more ammunition for his attack. But in this position as it stands, actually white's attack is faster. And so once you realize that the white king would just be safe dropping back to h1, then it, it alters your game plan. It means we don't need to go in straight away for checks. We can prepare. And the best preparation move, of course, is d6. Opening up the bishop, we're threatening queen at e7, queen at, queen at d7, queen at e7, queen takes f7. Uh, all kinds of mate threats. So hi there, Clara Cottontail, in the Twitch chat. So that's the, the, the motif of whose mate is faster. Okay, now a very beautiful motif. Um, so Blitz Bullet was white here. He actually won the game without using this motif. Uh, but this is a really pretty motif if it ever comes up, so you should definitely play it. And it's called the Queen Factory. We have only two pawns in hand in this position, but if we drop a pawn here, the king has to go to f8. We can then promote a queen. Black blocks, you simply take, king takes back, we have another pawn. We drop a pawn on h7, king has to go back to f8, we promote. Black blocks, you take, king takes back. You can collect quite a few pieces in this way. Um, so let's just pause a second. How do we use this to mate? So remember, black could block with a knight, two rooks, two queens. Can we see a mate? Um, so if black ever blocked with the knight, say the first time, then knight here would be checkmate. So he's probably going to be blocking with rooks. But then the second time round, when we went pawn here, check, king here, we don't need to promote. We could just go rook at g8, checkmate. So, yeah, I'll be posting the study link where you can look at, at you can play through all of these studies and many more. But the purpose of this video is just to, to highlight these motifs. Okay, so this is the motif of dropping pawns and promoting them. You can just keep on promoting, takes, king takes back, drop another pawn, promote, takes. Until you have enough material to mate. At the moment, we don't have enough material. If if he gives you a knight, then maybe you have a... Oh, hang on a second. I, I completely got that wrong. Because the king is not smothered. The king could take the bishop. So that's completely wrong. So actually, let, let's just think a second. So pawn, king goes here. Promote, blocks, takes, king takes back. Okay. If he's given us a rook... We've just got rook here, checkmate. So actually, that would be sorted. So he's probably given us a knight. So then check, king goes back, promotes, and then blocks with the rook. I think then we have the mate. Takes, king takes, and rook here is checkmate. I, I could have mis miscalculated, but that feels quicker than seven moves. So that's why I'm worried I miscalculated. Check, king here, promote, blocks with knight, takes takes, use our second pawn, king here, oh I mean we just got knight here checkmate, no no we don't have knight here checkmate because then king takes bishop, oops, um, so promote, block with rook, 
takes. Rook here looks like checkmate. So I seem to have miscalculated something. Um, so let me just see. So I'll, I'll give you the the link to the study at, uh, with the video, but this is just as an example. Um, okay, so I because I've set this up just for doing this, I'm not sure if this will be visible or not, or if the sizing will be all wrong. So if the sizing is all wrong, then I have to apologize, but that's basically what the board looks like. Um, and so we're going to go check and promote and take and then check. I know this has been a kind of less fun stream in some ways because we haven't been able to interact with the pieces like we normally do. Yeah, well, is it going to be a queen or a rook? And then we've got checkmate. Yeah, so it's very a very easy checkmate. Yeah. So okay, I'll I'll post the study link um, with the video. Oh, yeah. Well, since we're coming to we're since we're we're, we're coming to the end, I'll post it already. Um, although the purpose of this is to train in calculation, so you don't just play through. Um, okay. So the next one is. Rook at h8 ideas. So as a special case of the queen factory, there's another very nice way of doing things, which is you take a rook. So at the moment we have no rooks in hand, but we take a rook. If the bishop takes back, then we have a very simple mate. Knight f6, king into the corner, rook at g8, checkmate. But if the rook takes back, there's something very, very nice we can do. We can use the rook we just took to go to h8, the king then takes the rook, and then we land a pawn on g7, forking the king and the rook. The king goes back to g8, we pick up another rook. He takes it, and we could repeat the process several times. But actually, the second time he takes it, he takes it with the bishop, and so we have our mate. Knight at f6, rook at g8. So the trick here is the rook at h8 trick. So it's the queen factory, like, like the last one, but this time we're landing a rook, giving away a free rook, and then landing another pawn with check. So it's a very a nice motif. Okay, so we've done lots of different ones, but the most famous motif, of course, in Crazy House is the smother. Uh, this is quite, this is the slightly more complicated example, so I should have do this one first. We've got three knights in hand, nice easy smothered mate. We have two knights, can you see a smother? Um, and in fact, the move order doesn't matter. We, we land a check either here or here, and the pawn can't take because it's pinned. The rook takes it, and then we land in the other spot, which is now undefended. The rook can't, the rook is overloaded, can't defend both squares. So this is also an example of overloaded pieces. So land a knight at one of these two squares, rook takes, land another knight, checkmate. Okay, now this is slightly more complex. So we want again a smother. So first we want we want to land a check. We land a check here, because that's the only it's a undefended square. We're getting in on the king, the king goes away. Now in this position it doesn't look like we can get checkmate at all, because we want to land now a knight on g6. G6 is double protected. So a normal a normal move would be say going rook takes bishop. Or but actually that's very dangerous because then pawn takes pawn and suddenly we find our own king would be under some heavy attack, and we might even be mated. So it's very important to get this right. So knight check, king goes to h8. And the very beautiful move we have is dropping a queen at g8. Uh, black is forced to take it with the bishop. And now g6 isn't double protected. So when we land our second knight on g6, knight takes, knight takes. It's a smothered mate. Okay, now a little bit more complicated example. Um, not only can you smother with a knight, you can also smother with pawns. Um, so in this example, we, we could go knight here, check, and the king can't run away because the rook would land here with checkmate. So the king would have to run to d1. So 
So knight here check, king to d1. Now we've still got two rooks and a queen, and it's quite hard to see how to get at this king. But there's a very nice way using a pawn smother. This time we land a rook on e1, protected by our knight, so the king can't take it, the rook has to take it. We haven't got any more knights, so we might think, well, we haven't got a mate now. Well, in fact, even if we did have knights, it'd be no use, because the knight checks are covered. But we do have a mate. We can just go knight e3 check. Um, and it's not really a pawn smother, it's even a queen smother. So the pawn could take, or this pawn could take, and then the queen lands in on f2 with me. So I shouldn't have called this a pawn smother. I, I would have to call it more um, a queen smother, um, because this d, uh, d pawn could take, and so we want to cover d2 as well. Okay, so now we're on to the last three, so we're going to get have um, maybe slightly tricky motifs for these last three, because um, we've done the really important stuff. We've done smothers, before that we did minor piece mates, before that we did exploiting a pin and its converse, like interference, um, and before that we did king hunts and discover checks and magnet mates and deflecting defenders and drawing the king out and queen invasion and we began with back rank, the back rank motif. Okay, so this is clearance. So we are in great danger of getting mated here. Queen and queen e8 is checkmate. Um, and we only have a pawn and a knight in hand. So we could go knight here, check, it just gets taken. So really it doesn't look like there's a mate here at all. Um, but the key idea is to clear certain squares. So what we do first is we promote to a queen. If um, white were to take with the bishop, then we have a very easy task in mating. We just drop a knight here, check. The king would go to f1, and bishop takes pawn as checkmate. So white certainly has to take with the rook. Oh, also, White can't block because knight at d2 would be smothered mate. So it's good we did this after the smother. So we push, rook takes. Now because the rook's taking, that's covering knight at d2. So what we do is we go queen takes rook. So now we have a rook in hand. We have a rook, a knight, and a pawn. So we promote, rook takes, queen takes. Of course he has to take, or knight here would be smothered, so bishop takes. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet. Knight e2 doesn't really work. It goes king f1, bishop takes pawn, king takes. They'll be all very natural things to do. They don't quite work. But we have to use the fact there's a bishop here, the king here, and there are these three pawns and the rook. And we have a knight, a rook, and a pawn in hand. And that's just enough, it turns out, to find a mate. But the key method to finding that mate is going to involve clearance. So the Knight here doesn't actually work, the king just goes here. The mating technique is actually knight at h3. Uh, if the king were to move, pawn here would be checkmate. So you have to take that knight. And by doing so, you've cleared a space on g2, on b2 rather, for my rook. So it's not h3, a3. Knight on a3 takes rook on b2, king c1, and finally, pawn at d2, checkmate. So it's a really beautiful example of this motif, clearing away d2 and b2 by promoting, taking out the rook, so we're deflecting the defender, we're removing the defender, in fact, rather than deflecting it. Then, not knight at e2, but knight at a3, takes rook at b2, king c1, and pawn at d2, checkmate. So we're clearing these squares, these two squares, 
in order to end up with um, a rook here, defended by the bishop, and a pawn here, delivering checkmate, and the, and the bishop then cuts off the king from running further. Okay, next motif. Uh, and it's a defensive motif. Our king is under attack. And we, we've got a mating attack of our own, the threat to pawn takes rook. And if we could deflect this knight, this knight is a good defender of e2. In fact, white's got two defenders of e2, the knight and the queen. But notice that the queen is likely to be deflected to take this pawn on g2. So there's a very beautiful move, and quite incredible move, that black has. Um, he's in check, and yet there's a, maybe this is back to deflect the defender concept. Um, but I, I thought this motif was also turning defense into attack. We're, on, we're in check, so we have to defend. But there's a way of defending that also deflects white's defenders. Uh, and it's an incredible move, and it wasn't found in the game. And it's completely winning for black. Um, it was the game between who was the game between? Not sure. Um, Hmm, trying to remember. I think, oh yes, no. It might have been little clock in against six, I know it, but I'm not sure actually. Can't quite remember. Okay, so the very beautiful move is you block with the knight on e6. So the queen could pick off um, g2 which is creating all kinds of headaches for white. But then black has knight takes knight with two pieces now threatening mate on e2. And it's just practically impossible for white to stop this mate threat. Uh, because knight takes pawn is, you could take off the knight, queen e2. If you don't take the knight, knight's coming in here, knight takes pawn. So knight at e6, this defender suddenly leaps in with an amazing attack. Okay, and it's getting really late, so just the very last um, of these motifs. And this motif is a drawing motif. Um, sometimes in Crazy House you do get draws. Um, there are probably two ways you get draws, some kind of sort of exchanges where one player is defending, say, like you suppose you have a back rank and you takes, takes, and they keep on placing the same defenders and keep on exchanging. Um, so that's one way you could get a draw. So here, the black king is actually quite penned in, the bishop and the knight. There are mating possibilities. Um, so if you drop a queen on f8, then... Uh, then I think bishop takes gets black mated because knight at f6, king e7, knight takes rook. Um, knight takes rook. If the king were to step back, then... Um, why am I not seeing it? So queen here, bishop takes, knight here check, king takes bishop, knight takes rook. If the king were to step out like this, then uh, this knight is defended so we could go knight, hmm. If the king were to step out, maybe we have knight takes this pawn check. 
So this square is covered, this square is covered. But then maybe the king could go here and run back. Okay, I'm I'm really missing this, aren't I? I guess it's getting late, so what? Hmm. So I'm not seeing it right now, but I believe that bishop takes gets black mated. So rook takes, hmm. I got it completely the wrong way around. Bishop takes is completely fine. It's rook takes that gets black mated, because after rook takes, so queen at f8, rook takes, knight at g7 is checkmate. So after queen at f8, black has to take with the bishop. And then we do have knight f6, king e7, knight takes rook, king e8, knight f6, king e7, knight takes rook. And that is the draw. So then what gets mated is what if, after knight takes rook, the king goes to d6. And maybe it's not a mate, maybe it's just losing, but maybe it is a mate. Um, so let's see if we can see it. We have a rook in hand. It's not completely obvious. So we've got knight takes rook, king goes to e6, maybe, yeah, I'm not seeing it. So maybe it's not a forced mate, maybe it's just that it's winning for white in that circumstance. But anyway, we'd have to, you'd have to try it out on the study, uh, whose link I've given. Um, so yeah, queen f8, bishop takes, and the idea is this is actually a forced draw with, uh, if black wants to try and win the game. So knight here check, king here, knight takes rook, king steps back, knight here. And the king goes up and down and the knight shuffles up and down, checking. So that is a very unique... Um, well, no, that, that, that isn't actually unique to Crazy Horse. That, you, that exists in chess also. Um, but it, it's, it's one of the rare ways you can draw in Crazy Horse. Okay, so that's that's been um, the, the crazy... Um, sort of a summary of some crazy house motifs, very important crazy house motifs, and maybe for those who want to just uh, look at these studies, maybe it's just worth just going through these studies, five seconds for studies for each one, if those are just wanting to pause and study each one in turn. Okay, so it's the back rank motif, and pause. Another back rank motif, if you want to pause on this one. This is the Queen Invasion. I'm going to pause for a second. This is drawing the king out. I'm going to pause and calculate how to do it. This is what I call the yo-yo mate, where you're drawing the king out with pawns, just plopping the pawns down, and then you're going to land the mate with the queen. This is deflecting the defender, the first example, and this is a really nice example. This is another example of deflecting the defender, which must turn found. This is what I call the magnet mate, which is where you disturb the king just a little bit and then deliver mate, which is actually know it found in this position. So another example of the, of the magnet mate between JK the bullfrog, but he didn't play it exactly that way. So this was also an example of the magnet mate. So this is sex where I know it was black, actually did play it, but it also involves um, drawing the king out. So there was a bishop takes pawn to begin, and then the magnet mate. Uh, and this was a really beautiful example. It's kind of combined all the themes we were looking at at the beginning of back rank, drawing the king out, deflecting a defender. Well, not drawing the king out in this case, but uh, deflecting unless the king were not to take that. Uh, but deflecting, so back rank, deflecting a defender, and then when the king was on f8, a magnet mate to finish things off. Uh, this is a discovered check idea, if you want to pause and try and calculate the mate. Uh, this is a really difficult one, so I didn't go through it in this video. 
uh, it's a king hunt. Uh, but JK the Bullfrog successfully executed the king hunt in this game against Fumatox. Um, this one is exploiting the pin. Very beautiful, mate. Um, this one is interference. So it was a, a trap which Little Plotkin set Schwanet, and Schwanet fell into the trap. It's very important not to break the interference between the two bishops, because if you do, what happens? And if you, um, so how how not to do that? Uh, this was a minor piece mate. So minor pieces can mate by the bishops cover the dark squares and the knights cover the light squares. When the bishops and knights are actually both on the same colour of squares, they can cover both colours. Um, this is a double mate threat. Actually, white can be quite patient here. We said that there is a very beautiful mate by going pawn at h7, but white can be patient and just play knight g5, preparing for a mate. Um, and this is a special case of whose mate is faster. So if we look at white's position, we look at black's position. Black could certainly drum up a mating attack, but white's mating attack is faster. White isn't getting mated immediately, so white can actually pause and not deliver check, 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 followed by checkmate. He can deliver a slower move, and that slower move is d6, creating all kinds of mating threats all across the seventh, seventh rank, on those three squares especially. Um, next one is a queen factory. Very beautiful idea. You can just keep promoting and taking. Uh, although Blitzbullet won this game with a different approach. And this is, again, another technique which Blitzbullet loved, which was takes, drop a rook on h8, and then drop another pawn, takes, takes, takes. So queen factory with rook h8 ideas. Okay, then the classic idea in Crazy House of smothered mates. So if you want to think about this example, we'll pause for a second. And the ne next one is another example of smothered mates. This one is slightly more complex, but still fairly simple. And this was a, another example of smothered mates, but this time smothering not with the knight, but with it's kind of combined smother with the idea which we're going to come to next, which is clearance. You clear the square for the smother. This is a clearance example. This is quite a tricky example. Black has mate in this position, as we saw and explained in the video. Um, this black is in check, but has an amazing counterattack. So he can defend with a counterattack, and it uses the ideas of deflecting white's defenders. And finally, there is a drawing motif in this position. Uh, and inherent in that is the fact that if rook takes queen, there is a smothered mate. So it has to go bishop takes, therefore leaving open f6. But what happens if the king starts running to d6? You might want to calculate and assess who is... Is, is that mating for white or just losing? And I'm not sure what the answer is, so that's something you can try and calculate. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Um, this has sort of been an introduction to certain motifs in Crazy House, so I hope you've enjoyed.